Hey everyone, welcome back to Six Sister Stuff. Today, we're making freezer meals, and not just any freezer meals. These are my top 18. Now I know that sounds like a lot, but in case you don't like certain ones, you have a lot of options to pick from. Now every summer, my kids and I, we make a giant poster board of all the things we want to accomplish that summer. The problem is, is that when we're doing that many things, sometimes it's hard to get dinner on the table. So I love to make a lot of freezer meals, stick them in the freezer, so when it's dinner time, I actually have something that I can, you know, throw in the Instant Pot. Now if you've been here for a little bit, you know that I love freezer meals, so I am sharing with you my very top ones, the ones that I make all the time. All right guys, if you're ready, let's just jump right into the recipes. All right, so we're gonna start out with two cups of pasta. So the one that we are using, and I don't know if I'm gonna say it right, Ditalini, Ditalini. The little ones. Anyways, they're the cutest <laughs> little tubular pastas. My kids love them because they're a fun shape. Right. So you need two cups, which is about half of a 16 ounce container. And just go ahead, pour that into the bottom. Nice. Okay, then we're gonna do also two cups of chicken broth. And again, this is four cups, so we're gonna just kind of eyeball it and yeah. put in our two cups of chicken broth. Or at least until the noodles are all covered. Yep, there we go. Okay, then we're gonna add in two tablespoons of butter. And you can just like, <laughs> if it wants to, the to come. There we go. There we go. You can literally just plop it in, because guess what? It's gonna pressurize and melt, and it's gonna be perfect. Perfect. Um, just two cups of chicken. Yep, cooked chicken. Cooked chicken, cooked and diced. Okay. Okay, then it's time to cook it. All right. You're gonna put your lid on. You hear the little jingle? That means it's on correctly. Then this is called the Nova, so you don't have to turn any knobs to sealing or venting because, yeah, it doesn't have that. But if you do have a different one, like a Duo or a Lux, make sure that your little knob is turned to sealing. All right, so we're gonna push the pressure cook button and we're gonna go all the way down to about four minutes. Then once you set the timer, you can literally just walk away. All right, it is finished cooking. We are going to do a quick release because our pasta doesn't need to stay cooking continually. So I'm gonna either push this or if you have the knob, move it to venting. <laughs> Woo! We're gonna see how this works. All right, once all the pressure's out, you can safely open it. Nice. I love how big these noodles get, right? Yes. So right now you're just gonna mix in your chicken and your pasta and just kind of mix everything make together. Sure it's all done. Now the nice thing about this, if you fill up the liquid to where the pasta hits, you don't have to drain anything. You can actually just kind of mix and then we're ready to add the rest of the stuff. That's awesome. You're ready? Yep. Okay, what you got? Okay, so I'm gonna start with the tomatoes. These are sun-dried tomatoes. Sun-dried, yes. They have been drained. They come in a little jar. So you drain them, chop them up, kind of into as big of pieces as you want. So we did like four ounces of those. You yeah. can do up to eight ounces if yeah. you love. If your family loves them. Yes. Yes. Okay, next time I'm just gonna add an eight ounce block of cream cheese. Um, we'll get that starting to melt in yes. there. Let it sit in the heat. Yes. You can even, if you want to, cut it Let's up. break it up. Yeah, it's a it good idea. It will even faster. Okay. Okay, then we're gonna add about a half cup of grated Parmesan cheese. Just dump that Throw in. That right in. Mm -hmm. And we've got, how much uh, parsley? One tablespoon. Cool. <laughs> okay, so we have Half a teaspoon of pepper and what, half a teaspoon of garlic salt. Yep. Awesome. All right. Let me just dump that in. There you go. Nice. All right. I'll mix this a little bit. Okay. And then we've got how much milk? About half a cup. Okay. Cup of milk. Pour that right on top. All right. So this is going to take a little while for the cream cheese to like melt and mix in. Yeah. So we're actually gonna help it along a little bit. So you're gonna push cancel and then you're gonna push the saute button. So we'll just help it. Yeah, cook Heats it up really yeah. fast. And any extra liquid like that milk in there, we'll, we'll make sure that it's all nice and, yeah. and thickened up a little bit. There we go. so good. It does. The other thing I'm gonna throw in while you're mixing that up and it's okay. heating up is just two cups of baby spinach. And I actually kind of just rip it with my hands so it's even smaller. Good idea. It's going to shrink a ton. Yeah, you and probably won't, your kids probably won't even be able to see it. Yep, but because I do have picky kids, I <laughs> am going to rip it up even smaller. Nice. And a picky husband. <laughs> awesome. 
This is, this is my life. Hide the vegetables in there. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, so you want about two cups or two big handfuls of that. Nice. And it will shrink down as it, the cream cheese melts and everything heats up. Yeah. All right, so it's all mixed together. It smells amazing. We're gonna push cancel here so it will stop cooking because we don't want it to burn onto the bottom. Yes. But here is when you can either like serve it right now or yep. you can let it cool down a little bit and then put it in a freezer meal bag <laughs> or whatever you want. That was a huge mess. Miss? <laughs> yes, not the best serving spoon, but you get the gist. You get the gist. It's amazing. And it tastes so good. Nice and creamy. Totally cheesy. Your kids and the even spinach. Are gonna love yep, it. everybody loves this one. So there you go. Now, growing up, our mom used to make this all the time. Yes. She served it on pasta, on rice. rice. You can even plain. put it right, just plain, so and then good. put it on a salad. That's how my husband likes I to know. eat it. I know. It's, it's really so yummy. good. Kay. All right, I'm gonna write it down. Perfect. We're gonna move this so they can see. Okay. Instant pot. What would you say? 20 minutes, 25? Again, Kay. chicken, because it's if it's frozen, you're gonna go 25. If it's thawed, you'll go 20 minutes. Kay. Now, if you want, what I like to do, sometimes they're so frozen when they come out of the freezer that I just throw it in the fridge the night before, and then cooking it is a whole lot easier. Okay, Kay. that sounds good. Slow cooker? Okay, slow cooker, we're gonna Same. go, yep, Low, six, six, eight hours. Eight. What about high? What would that be, three to four? Three to four. Okay. The only thing- Low tastes better. It does, if you go high, it kind of dries out the it chicken. Out. Okay. okay, are Let's we ready? Let's do this. Okay, do, Start with do you want to hold it? I'll put, pull in, Let's pour it do in that. the time. Okay. You got the chicken. I'll, I'll touch the chicken. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do four chicken breasts this time. Okay. Make it six to eight. There we go. Or if you're my husband, come on. His Whoa. stomach is a family of four, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have that. Then we have some zesty Italian salad dressing. It's just a little pack that you buy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get it anywhere. Walmart. Is it one ounce? Smith's. Let's see. It's 0.6 ounces. 0.6 ounces. There we go. Just dump that whole thing in. Mm, nice. That smells so good. Yeah. Next, we're gonna add a can of cream of chicken stew. Let's see if we can get it out. Oh, mm, delicious. Delicious. <laughs> But it, it makes better. it creamy, it makes it creamy. <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna add just two cups of the chicken broth. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it because it really doesn't matter that much. So, <laughs> this is the pivotal point. <laughs> now, if you are cooking this in your Instant Pot, go ahead and put your eight ounces of cream cheese in there right now. So if you're gonna cook it in your slow cooker, you wanna leave it in the box and just put it, I mean, if you're gonna freeze it for like a month or so, you mm -hmm. can put it in the freezer next to it or you could just keep it in the fridge too. Yeah. So we're gonna make this in the Instant Pot. Yep. So I'm so gonna put my cream in. cheese in. And then when you cook it in the slow cooker, what is it, like the last half hour of cooking is when yes. you mix you it in? You just throw this in. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of melts and makes it all creamy goodness. Yep. Fat yep. free, calorie free, carb free, Yeah, this one's dairy -free. really healthy. <laughs> But six ingredients less. <laughs> I'll We're take all it. About it's it. better than going out to eat. So Okay, so that's everything, right? Right. You go ahead and zip that up. Fill her and up, then squish out the air. There we go. Now I like to shred my chicken and all my recipes after they're all cooked yep. to make it a little easier to eat. Yep. All right, so if you love freezer meals, we actually have a post on our website. It's called 50 mm -hmm. Freezer Meals. You can check out a link in the description because it gives you tons of ideas to make freezer meals and not just the slow cooker, instant pot kind, even the kind that come in the tin foil pans. Okay, our next freezer meal is one of my very favorites. It's also yes. my go-to meal when I need something fast and I don't have a dinner planned. This is our black bean taco soup. So you're gonna start with a pound of ground beef or ground turkey or ground chicken yeah. or shredded chicken. This is the only recipe where you do need to pre-cook the beef just yes. because um, it's not going to completely cook and crumble like you need it It will to. have a weird texture yep. if you don't. It'll be like so, a meatloaf. Yeah, so let's so do that ahead of time and then just add it in. Nice. And I'm just gonna add a bag of frozen corn. So they yep. asked for like a, about a cup, but I like corn, so right? we're gonna add. Add as much as you exactly. want. If you don't have a bag of frozen corn, a can of corn works, works great, great too. Okay, and then because it's a black bean taco soup, we've got a can of black beans they're rinsed and drained, nice. so go ahead and dump those in. All right, then just one can of tomato sauce. Now this is, what, 15 ounces? Yeah, so a big yep. can. Big can. Yep. 
And then we've got a can of green chilies. So these don't add heat. You'll look on here and it says mild. I buy the mild kind. Yes, because <laughs> obviously is, we want this to be kid friendly, but they do add a lot of flavor. So don't skip this. If you want heat, go ahead and add jalapenos. Like a can of Ooh, jalapenos. That would be good. Yeah. But not necessarily. Definitely has a kick, it. but yes. Okay. Okay, next one is, so the recipe calls for stewed tomatoes. But my kids don't necessarily love stewed tomatoes, yeah. so we're gonna do diced tomatoes yep. today instead. So just two cans of diced tomatoes. You're gonna leave the juice in there because it's a soup. We want we you want, want a the bit of liquid. liquid. Yep. Yeah, I've always used stewed tomatoes in this, and mm -hmm. then one time my husband was like, "Hey, these are such big tomatoes. Can you use a smaller <laughs> right. tomato?" I was like, "Oh my gosh, I didn't even think of that." Yeah. Yes, you can. You can do whatever you want. And then the last thing is just a chopped onion. So if you want to save time as you're prepping these meals, you can actually buy pre-diced onion. <laughs> All right, and then of course we do need some taco seasoning to make this taco soup. So this is just one packet. You can use homemade taco seasoning or to keep it simple, I just dump in a packet. Nice, yeah. love it, love it. Okay, so that's it. Now, if you are gonna do this in your Instant Pot, basically all you have to do is heat it up. You just wanna heat it through. The meat's already cooked, yeah. so it's just five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, in your slow cooker, because it's already cooked, really it's only gonna be like two to three hours on high. Yeah. Um, you could do it on low for like five to six, or if you want to, throw this in a big stock pot on your stove top mm. and just heat it up. It'll take maybe 30, 45 minutes. Yeah, you just wanna make sure those onions yep. are cooked so yeah. it's not hard. And now that's if it. you are doing it in this pot, you might need a little bit more liquid yes. just because it's it's a thick soup. So I would throw a half a cup to cup of either broth or water mm -hmm. and it will still taste great. So, Okay, okay. done with this There one. you go. Let's move on to the next. All right, the next recipe is honey sesame chicken. Now, I think it was you that introduced me to this recipe. I did. One of my favorites and my family favorites. Yeah, so. Actually, little known Love fact, spirit. this was our very first recipe on Six Sisters to reach one million free pins on Pinterest. Really? Yep. One of the first ones that went viral and kind of exploded us into Helped us what we do. A little. That's so, so there you go. Well, I went through a phase. there's a reason why, let's, yeah. why it hit so many, because it's good. Okay. All right, should we jump in? Let's do it. All right, so we started like what? Two to three pounds of chicken breasts in yep. here. We just used yep. frozen because simple, easy, and you don't have to. You could also use chicken thighs if you do have those on hand. That works really good for this recipe. That's very true. Okay, first we're gonna add just a cup of honey. This isn't quite a cup, but it's close. But it's my local raw honey. So it's the which, good stuff. It's the good stuff. Yeah, so good. We're just gonna pour that right on top. Okay. okay. And then we do have a half a cup of soy sauce. You can use light soy sauce if you're worried about salt, but um, either one will work great. Nice. Just the combination of those two smells so good. So good. <laughs> then we have like two cloves or about a teaspoon of garlic. Yep. The more garlic, the better in right. this recipe. Exactly. I love it. Okay, and then we have one onion or just a half onion, depending how big your onion is. Yeah. About a cup or so. That's true. Okay. And then on my side, I'm gonna do just salt and pepper, kind of to taste. I believe it's like a teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon yeah. of pepper, but it really is just, you can add more when it's done too if you need totally. more. But. You're gonna get a lot of salt from the soy sauce, so exactly. it doesn't need that much, but the pepper is important. Speaking of pepper, we're gonna add some red pe pepper flakes. Yes. Now you can add as much or as little as you want. However, I do recommend adding some. It's not going to add very much heat, but it is going to add a really good flavor that you need for this. Yeah. Okay, so uh, then we're gonna add two tablespoons of oil. I did not measure this out as well as I should have, so we're just <laughs> gonna be guessing two tablespoons there. And then the last ingredient we're gonna add is just a half cup of ketchup, just to kind of make it a little bit more of a sauce, add a little bit of sweetness. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Okay. Right, so this recipe, you can cook in the Instant Pot, you just need to add a little bit more liquid, yeah. whether water or chicken broth. I would say about a half a cup. Um, put this in the Instant Pot, pour in your half a cup. Um, or you can cook it in the slow cooker, slow cooker, yeah. what would you say? I would say low five to six hours or high three to four hours. With chicken breast, they tend to dry out if you cook them much more than six hours on low. Gotcha. Even from frozen. So keep an eye on it because you don't want them to be all dry. You want them to be perfectly moist. Um, chicken thighs actually work better in the slow cooker because they have a little bit more 
fat content to them, so yeah. they're going to be a little bit juicier, a little more moist, so that's an option too. So when this is all done cooking, you're gonna take four teaspoons of cornstarch and then six tablespoons of water mm -hmm. and kind of just mix it together in a little bowl. Yep. Then you're gonna dump it into either the slow cooker or instant pot. Let it just like simmer there for about 10 minutes or so yep. just to thicken it up a little bit. That will give you a really good sauce yes. to drizzle over everything. Yes. And then I like to serve this over rice. Yeah. I would say rice is the best. Me too. And then it is sesame chicken, so just go ahead and add a little bit of sesame seeds on top. Now we have this recipe down below in the description for you, so if you're looking for those instructions at the very end, that's where they're at. All right. Okay. Whew. There Down you go. <laughs> okay, let's move on. All right, so the first freezer melt I'm making is cilantro lime chicken. Now, if you're gonna cook this from frozen, you're gonna cook it for 25 minutes, or if you're gonna cook it thawed, you're gonna do it for 20. Now, if you're gonna cook this in the slow cooker, you're gonna cook it for six to eight hours on low. I would suggest going low on this one. So first you're gonna add about two pounds of chicken into your freezer bag. Now I'm using tenderloins, you can use chicken breast, just try and get it around two pounds or so. Next you're gonna dump in a can of corn. Now I left the liquid in the corn because we always like a little bit of liquid when we're cooking in the Instant Pot. Then you're gonna go ahead and get a can of black beans, make sure that you rinse and drain it, then you're gonna just dump it on top of your corn. On top of that, you're gonna add one can of your Rotel tomatoes. Now, I, go, I went ahead and left the juice in here too because, again, a little bit of liquid is great. Next, you're gonna add about one cup of your favorite salsa. I like to use Herdez salsa, but you can use whatever you want. Now, I've chopped up a half of an onion. Now, I only had a red, a red onion available, and so that's what I'm using is a red onion. Then to give it that delicious cilantro flavor, I did about a half a cup of cut up cilantro. Now you don't wanna forget the lime part of it, so you're gonna go ahead and add two tablespoons of lime juice. Now you can use fresh limes too, just don't hate me for using the jarred kind because it just makes my life easier, okay? Okay. Now to add a little bit of seasoning, we're gonna add about two teaspoons of cumin or cumin, however you want to say it and then add two teaspoons of chili powder. And then I just added about a clove, or I guess one teaspoon of garlic. Now you are welcome to add salt and pepper. I like to add salt and pepper after it's all done cooking so I can kind of taste how that comes together, but you can add it now if you want to. So right now we're just gonna close it up, make sure you're gonna suck all the air out of it so it will freeze well. And there is a lot of food here. It feeds about six to eight people and it freezes easily after you've already cooked it too. So win-win for everyone. All right, we are all done here, so I'm just gonna close it up and stick it right into the freezer. So I love dump and go freezer meals because you literally get to dump the whole entire thing in and then cook it. It makes life so easy. Now I usually like to make two or three recipes of the same recipe at the same time because it, it's just so easy throughout the month. So go ahead and put the lid on. Go ahead and make sure that the seal is tight and you're gonna turn that little knob to sealing, not venting. Go ahead and push the pressure cook button or the manual button, and we're doing 25 minutes because my chicken is frozen. If it's all the way thawed, you can do 20 minutes. Now when the timer is all done, go ahead and turn that little knob to venting. When all the pressure's out, you can lift your lid up, and I'll just warn you right now, it smells amazing. That cilantro, oh, so good. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a little while, you know that I love using Bear Paws to cut up my chicken. It's just easy for me. So I'll put a link in the description for you of those Bear Paws. They literally are my favorite and I use them all the time. All right, so when your chicken is all shredded, go ahead and put it right back into your Instant Pot. You want kind of the, the inside of the chicken to also have a chance to get those juices around it. And then my favorite thing to serve this on is tortillas. I love some type of chicken taco. So I just put this on a mini tortilla and then you can add all the ingredients that you guys like on tacos like sour cream, tomatoes, avocados, more cilantro, whatever you guys like, go ahead and put it on. 
Oh, and cheese. You can't forget cheese. Anyways, I like to put all the toppings on the table so the kids can kind of pick and choose what they want on top of their tacos. All right, I hope you guys like this recipe. Let's move on to the next one. And supposedly, this is the same recipe they have at Texas Roadhouse. So, so I don't know, it. give it a try. See if you think it tastes like theirs. Regardless, it's good. It is. So we're starting with a rump roast or just a chuck roast. Like whatever roast you can find in your grocery store will work great. It will work, I would say yeah. three to four pounds, somewhere around there. Yeah would yeah. be the best and that will feed a good sized family or give you great leftovers. <laughs> exactly. And then you can't have roast if you don't have potatoes. Exactly. So we're gonna throw in, these are pre-washed little baby, I think these are just white potatoes. Yeah. But really any potatoes you have and you can chop them up if right. you've got like big russet potatoes or baby red potatoes were great. Right. Whatever maybe, you got. maybe like two russet potatoes, yeah. like kind of about that size. Chopped so. up, yep, right around there. And then we're gonna do just some chopped celery. How much is this? Half, two stalks. Just two stalks, yep. okay. And then one red bell pepper. Nice. We so, have lots of peppers in I these know. recipes. I, I love, love it, it though. It's such a good way to get in vegetables and I love when vegetables cook with the meat. <laughs> exactly. Because my kids will eat them. And then just one onion. One onion. Okay, and then we've got okay. a plethora of seasonings. Yes, we do, because we got a little lazy and stuck them all together. <laughs> so we have one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of pepper, and a half teaspoon of thyme right here. Oh, okay. So, not too so difficult. All the good stuff. Exactly. I love thyme on top of a pot roast. Me too. Okay, and then more seasonings. We're gonna add in some beef bouillon cubes. Yep. Just two of those, just throw them right on top. If I can open If we can there open we go. We got yep. this. We got this. I saw that you can buy beef bouillon that's like, <gasps> you can measure out with a teaspoon. Really? Yeah. Like it's all powdered. It's awesome. Nice. nice. Okay. And then we're going to do half cup of this. Yep. Half cup of tomato sauce. So we'll just do a little bit in each one. And we eyeball. Yeah. We're just. Because we're moms. <laughs> here, and here's the thing. Like, you can't mess this up. You can't. Like, you really can't. Just. Whatever you want to do. And so exactly. then you need a half cup of barbecue sauce. So yep. we're just going to eyeball that again. And while she does barbecue sauce, I'm just going to do, it's about two cloves, so I'm just kind of doing a heaping of our pre-chopped cloves. Some people don't like them. If you want to chop up your own cloves too, that's great. Yeah, I just, whatever you want to do. I love the refrigerator cloves. You bet. And if you don't have fresh cloves, you could just add a little bit of garlic powder. That's a good idea. You'd be fine. Like, yep. Just Make it work. Okay, and then we got about three fourths cup of water that we're just gonna dump in. So we we'll need that to pressurize. Okay, there you go. Struggle. Kind of a good mix with like traditional pot roast. Right. And then you add a little bit of barbecue sauce in there. There's a little something in there. It yeah, smells good. It's good. I'm That's excited for be a this good one. Combo. Me too. Might have this for dinner too. Right. <laughs> dinner is done. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Well, that's it. And oh, then, we got to talk about how it cooks. Sorry. Yes, yes, real quick. So 60 to 90 minutes, depending on how big your roast is. If it's a really big yeah. one, make sure you go for 90. If it's small, go ahead and go for 60. And then slow cooker, I love to do these low and slow, like and eight to 10 way. hours yep. on low in the if slow cooker. If you are gonna be gone all day, like working, throw this in your slow cooker in the morning, let it cook for that eight to 10 hours on low, like. It's so good, it's and your house good. smells so good. Exactly, it's the best part. Okay, our next freezer meal is French dip sandwiches. Now this is the easiest meal that we are going to be making, the easiest freezer yes. meal. So this recipe's been on our site forever, and it used to call for two cans of beef consomme, which we have learned they don't carry anymore, especially hard since to find. coronavirus. Exactly. Um, so we don't know if they make that anymore, but we're gonna share with you a substitution. So instead of using two cans of beef consomme, you can use one can of beef broth and one can of condensed French onion soup. So all you have to do is put your rump roast in there, one mm -hmm. huge um, rump roast. This is like, what, three pounds? This is, yeah. Two to three pounds, depending on what your family, family needs. Um, you can also use a chuck roast, and then you just pour the cans right on top. Do you want to do that one? Do that one too. Awesome. And that's it. <laughs> super simple, super <laughs> easy. Yep. Okay, you go, you go. No, 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 <laughs> I was just gonna say, this one you want to cook low and slow. So if you have a slow cooker, great, throw it in there. We're talking eight to 10 hours, like put this in right when you wake up in the morning, we'll let it cook so all day. All day. Plus mm -hmm. your house will smell good. Right. And then or, when it's done, shred it up. There we go. I love. I still love using the Instant Pot for this <laughs> one because you can cook it for like 90 minutes and it's going to fall apart yep. just like it would the low and slow. So depending on what you like or what you have, <laughs> either one works. Yep. So. 
All right, guys, done with this one. Let's move on to the next. All right, so the next freezer meal we're making is our hearty beef stew. Now, my mom used to make this <laughs> all the time, and growing up, I didn't love it. I didn't you love didn't? stew. No, oh but gosh. now it's one of my favorites. And There's nothing better on a cold right? day. I agree. <laughs> I agree. So, yes, hearty beef stew. Okay, yeah. so we had about a pound of stew meat. I love buying at the store that's already cut up, ready to go, so you can just dump it dump in. It in. Then we just start adding our ingredients. So we have one onion all chopped up. There we go. Can we go next? Yeah, so this is red potatoes, I'd say like three, three to four, four. depending mm -hmm. on the size. Um, this is going to fill up your bag very quickly. It's a very it's a, big freezer yes. meal. So if you need a bigger bag, feel free to grab it. Exactly. <laughs> now, we do get a lot of questions about potatoes. Do they go brown when you freeze them? They do a little bit, Sometimes. But, but guess what? Your stew is brown, so <laughs> it doesn't really matter. It's gonna, they're gonna be they're brown anyway. So. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And to prevent browning too, like the longer it sits in your freezer, obviously the more brown these potatoes are gonna turn. So I yeah. would recommend eating this one within 30 days. It'll probably be good for up to 60 days. Yeah. After that, it starts to get freezer burned, but. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, then we're gonna put the seasoning in now okay. over the potatoes. Yep. Because I love it. So this is just one package of Lipton onion soup mix, which is one of my favorites. Yeah. Do you want to do carrots next? Sure, so I'll do carrots. Pack we'll it get in. the big things. Yeah. Yep. Then it's it's about four carrots cut up, but I'm taking the lazy route, and I love <laughs> doing baby carrots yeah. and just throwing them in. This it's, is gonna cook so long. It's yes. okay if they're not chopped up. Exactly. Yeah. I'm just gonna layer it. Not add. Them. Yeah. What do you think? About yep, four. That looks perfect. Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I'm gonna add a bag of frozen peas. I love the layers the in this. Thing. I know. It's huh? my favorite. Isn't that funny? Right. Okay. Okay. Now soup our first. sauce. Okay. Yep. So it's so simple. All that it is is two cans of cream of mushroom soup and two small cans of tomato sauce or one big can. And a lot of people will be like, oh, I don't like cream of mushroom soup. There are so many recipes online to make your own, but for convenience sake, I just love using the canned stuff. Right. So we're keeping it super simple. And this makes, you can't taste the mushrooms at all. It just mm -hmm. makes such a creamy sauce yes. for your stew. Kids love it. Okay. And then to, so about 15 ounces in total of yep. tomato sauce. Ooh, like I said, it fills this bag up. The top. Yep. Okay. All right, so, so when you're cooking this, you can cook it in the Instant Pot. We would just suggest maybe doing the slow cooker. Slow cooker would work better for this because you're gonna have to add a lot more liquid and it burns a lot more. So slow cooker is the way to go, or you could add a cup of water first and then your stew, or I guess beef broth or whatever you wanted to add. Yep. And then your stew on top to do an Instant Pot, but that I is just a found. Hearty beef stew. Yes. <laughs> well, you like, I like it thick. So if you do Instant Pot, it's gonna be a lot thinner. So, yeah. anyways, there you go. Instant Pot, about 30 minutes. And then slow cooker, I like low and slow, six or yeah. eight to 10 hours. Eight to 10 hours. This is another low. one you can put in in the morning before work. And when you get home from work, dinner is done. done. Serve it with some rolls or like some good crusty bread. Or if you're like me, you're put a little ketchup on top. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And weird, <laughs> weird secrets from Kristen's life. So good. <laughs> All right guys, we're done with this one. Let's move on. Now we didn't really have this growing up, but yeah. as I got older and adults, I, I tried it and I loved it. And my husband loves it, so. Do your yes. kids love it? Kids love it too. Not they love meatballs, so <laughs> Anything meatball. Right. Starting with our trusty bag of frozen meatballs. I love frozen meatballs. Yeah, too. They're pre-cooked. Right. If you're feeling super domestic, you could make your own. You can. Next, we're just gonna add two cups of beef broth on top. Now, this is a container, so we kind of just kind of measure it. It's about half, half the container, yeah. so. Perfect. Our next ingredient is a can of cream of mushroom soup. Now, like we said before, if you want to make your own, you can. But um, I just like the convenience of using condensed soup already made in the can. Makes there you it go. Creamy, that Swedish yeah. meatball. Mm, yeah, perfect so gravy. Right. And then we have two tablespoons of steak sauce. So you can use A1. Um, I'm gonna eyeball it here. Yeah. yeah. That's how we roll. Totally. <laughs> just to add a little bit of kick. Exactly. Huh. Okay, so the next thing we've got is a half teaspoon of garlic powder. Nice. You want to add that? Yeah. Too? And then a half teaspoon of paprika. 
Yep. Is that how you say it? I am using paprika. This is smoked paprika. <gasps> Which I love. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Okay, and then it calls for fresh mushrooms, but sometimes you forget ingredients. <laughs> and so we're just gonna use using what you got. two cans of just mushrooms. Yeah. So you can't have Swedish meatballs without mushrooms. Yeah. I guess you can, but I love mushrooms. And, and these cook up just fine in the in some pots. So right. can't tell the difference. Exactly. Yeah. And then we're just gonna add one onion on top of it. Good? Yeah, looks okay. good. Add a little bit of salt and pepper if you yep. want. Again, you, you can, can add seasoning, seasoning at after. the end. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then when this is all done cooking, you're gonna stir in one cup of sour cream. So we don't add it right now because if you were to cook it with the sour cream, it probably will curdle yeah. in the Instant Pot and slow cooker. So save this until the end and then you'll stir in the one cup of sour cream. It makes it all creamy, all thick and delicious. So good. Yeah. And then we like to serve this on top of like egg noodles yeah. or mashed potatoes. So both are delicious. Whatever you want, it'll be so good. All right, cooking. Now, in the Instant Pot, you can cook this. If it's thawed, I would suggest thawing it 24 hours in advance so you have that liquid so it won't burn. We just don't want the burn notice going yeah. on. But meatballs only take seven minutes to cook. So you can literally cook this in seven minutes and have an amazing meal. Yep. Okay, so and then slow cooker, you can cook like six to eight hours on low or about three to four on high. I feel like yeah. you can do meatballs on high and it will taste yeah, okay. Yeah, that will be fine. Exactly. All right, I'm gonna mix this in just a little bit. Yeah, we're good that to go. So these Instant Pot egg roll bowls are so easy to make. They're actually pretty healthy and they don't take a lot of time at all. So first you're gonna brown the meat and then cook everything in the Instant Pot. After that, you can either serve it in bowls or you can serve it in some egg roll wrappers and I'll show you how to do that too. All right guys, if you're ready, let's get cooking. So you're gonna start by pushing the saute button on your Instant Pot. Now once it's hot, you're gonna dump in one pound of ground turkey or ground pork or even ground chicken, whatever you like. Now I have a little chop stir thing. This is my most favorite thing to cut up my meat or mashed potatoes or any of that stuff. I'll put a link in the description for it. It's my favorite thing. Now once your meat is all cooked, it's time to add the seasonings. First you're gonna add one tablespoon of garlic powder. Then I'm gonna add one tablespoon of dried ground ginger. Now the ginger gives it that yummy, taste. On top of that, go ahead and add one tablespoon of soy sauce. I like to use a lower sodium soy sauce, but it's totally up to you what you want to use. And then you're just going to add a half a cup of chicken broth. Now you can use water if you don't have chicken broth, but I like to use the chicken broth. Then to stir it all together. At the store, I just grabbed a bag of coleslaw mix. It's all put together, all ready to go, and I'm just dumping the whole entire bag in. Now I'm just pushing the coleslaw down a little bit. You don't want to mix a lot because you want that liquid in the bottom of your pot. All right, once you're done, go ahead and put your lid on. Make sure the little knob is turned to ceiling. I'm gonna push the cancel button because it was on saute, you need to push cancel. Then push pressure cook button or manual and you're going down to zero minutes. Now after you set the timer, it's gonna say on after a few seconds. That means you did it right, you can walk away. Now because it's only set for zero, it won't take long at all. And I hope, went ahead and pushed the knob over to venting to let all of the pressure out. Once you can take the lid off, go ahead and do it and then mix it all together. Then once you're all done, it's time to go on to the egg roll wrappers. Now you have some options with the egg roll wrappers. I like to cut them up into a few different strips and kind of make them as like little dippers. It's totally up to you how you want to do this, but I just spread them on a sheet pan. Now go ahead and brush them with a little bit of olive oil and then put them in the oven at 400 degrees for about four to five minutes, but you have to watch them. Now you can also make egg rolls by putting a little bit in the center of the wrapper and then folding in both sides and rolling it up. Now you want to be sure to place it seam side down, that way it won't fall apart while it's cooking. Because these are baked egg rolls, they're not going to have the bubbly look as if they're deep fried. You can deep fry if you want, but baked is a whole lot better for you. Alright, I'm going to brush them a little bit with olive oil 
Stick them in the oven at 350 degrees. They'll cook for about 40 minutes. And there you have it. These are the egg roll bowls or just egg rolls. All right, this one was my kid's favorite. It's called lazy lasagna. Now you only have to cook it in your instant pot for about seven minutes, or you can do the slow cooker for about three to four hours on low. Now I'm switching things around a little bit, so I'm gonna add some things that I usually add last. First, so you're gonna add about one teaspoon of garlic, about one onion. Again, I just had purple onions, so if you had normal onions or yellow onions, you can add that too. But I had purple, so that's what we're using today. Now, while I was chopping up the onions, I was also browning some hamburgers. So I have about one pound of ground beef here that I cooked and I drained out the grease and I'm just throwing it into the Instant Pot. You can cook it in your Instant Pot or just over the stove top. Next, I'm gonna add about a one cup to one and a half cups of your favorite marinara sauce or spaghetti sauce or whatever you like to make with your lasagna. Then I'm gonna fill that container with two cups of water, mix it around a little bit and just dump it in because you need a liquid in there. Now right now you can add salt and pepper. I actually like to add my salt and pepper at the very end, like right before I serve it, so I know how much salt and pepper is actually in there. So go ahead and add it. If you're not going to, go ahead and zip it up and make sure all the air is out of your container. Now if you're making this in a slow cooker, you're only gonna add one cup of water. Just one, not two. Now for the best part, you just get to dump everything into the Instant Pot or slow cooker, if you're using a slow cooker. <laughs> now, if you're using an Instant Pot, you're gonna go ahead and dump your pasta into the Instant Pot right now. If you're using a slow cooker, please cook your pasta on the stove top because you will have really mushy noodles if you try and cook it in your slow cooker at the same time. But Instant Pot, you can do it. So you're gonna dump in one pound of your favorite pasta. You could even like rip up or I guess break apart lasagna noodles if you want it to be lasagna, but I like, I like these little noodles because they're just cute. All right, so you're going to press them down into your sauce. Now, we usually have about two and a half, three cups of water, so I'm gonna actually add a half a cup of water on top of the noodles. You just wanna make sure all the noodles are touching a liquid. Now all you have to do is put the lid on, make sure that it is sealed correctly, then you're gonna take that little knob and turn it to sealing, not venting. Go ahead and push the pressure cook or manual button and then we're just going to seven minutes. When the timer's done, go ahead and flip it over to a quick release and release the lid. Now go ahead and mix it around a little bit. It, there will be more liquid on top than there is on bottom, but once you start mixing, it's like a perfect texture or I guess perfect liquid amount. Now if it's too liquidy for you, go ahead and push the saute button and you can dissolve some of that liquid, but for me, it worked perfect. Now this is where it gets fun because you can add whatever you like. I'm gonna add about one cup of cottage cheese. You can also put ricotta or literally any kind of cheese you like, but I like it to be a little more creamy, so added some cottage cheese. Now I also like adding fresh spinach while it's hot. You put in the spinach and you mix it all around and it wilts it and it's absolutely amazing. I mean, the nice thing about this recipe, if you like specific lasagna, if you like sausage in your lasagna, this would be the perfect time to add it in. I also, when I like serving this, I like to put some cheddar cheese on top with a little bit of cilantro, and it's delicious. My family loves it. So, all right, okay, let's get started. So we've already prepped our bags. Yep. You so want to be sure to write on it what it is yes. and how long to cook it for, because when it's frozen, and you pull it out and it just is a big blob, a blob of, food. of nothing. You, you don't, don't know. know. What it is. <laughs> so that's super important to write what it is and the cook time on there. Yes. So these are our Instant Pot Hawaiian meatballs. Now they cook about seven minutes in your Instant Pot or three to four hours in your slow cooker. Mm -hmm. Now, if you guys are proud of me, so many of you recommended these things for me from Freezer Mills. They're the and best. I finally broke down and bought some. Yeah. So. I'll put a Such link a good Amazon in the kind. description. Yeah, for you. So if you're wondering what they are, just holds your bag it open does. so and that you can just load the stuff in there. You don't need two people to make it. You can just make <laughs> it yourself. All right. I do sometimes use just a, like a big plastic pitcher that I got at the dollar yeah, store, yeah. and that works too. Hold it over. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Let's add our meatballs. First thing is just meatballs. Any kind of meatballs will work. Yep, so these ones are 32 ounce. You can have like a 22, 24 ounce too. That will work perfectly with this mm -hmm. recipe. And you said that these meals feed four to six. Yes. This, this one, one I can even stretch to eight. Exactly, I was gonna say, this one makes a little bit more. It makes a lot. A lot of meatballs. Yep. Okay, next, let's do our peppers. So we chopped up a red pepper. Just so a red pepper, pepper mm -hmm, in each one. Yep. Ooh. I love when you make your own freezer meals too, because you can load in as many vegetables as you want. And like exactly. the more and that I know that my kids like and will eat. Exactly, so. or take out vegetables that your kids yes, eat. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. I also usually throw in a green pepper to these two. Oh, nice. Just for more pepper. Right now we're adding a 20 ounce can of pineapple chunks. Now we're adding in the liquid too because you're gonna need that liquid if you're cooking it in the Instant Pot. I think it helps in the slow cooker too. I think so too. Yeah. I like it's a little the, more the, moist. The sweet from the pineapple is really Yes, good. okay. All right, so first thing going in, we're gonna do one cup of brown sugar. Just pack it in there. In each one. All Into right. Into each one. Mm -hmm. And while she's doing brown sugar, I'm going to do the vinegar. It's about two thirds cup of white distilled vinegar in each one too. Now I know what you're thinking, vinegar, that sounds disgusting, but it actually makes it taste so good. Yep, it's just kind of the acidity with the sweetness, like it all comes together. Right. Sorry, I gave you the hard job. No, oh, it's totally Pack brown fine. sugar. Oh dear. The smell of vinegar always reminds me of Easter. Easter oh, eggs. I am shaky, I am shaky. There we go. <laughs> and then while she finishes up brown sugar, I'm just gonna add two tablespoons of soy sauce to each one too. All right. We got all the ingredients in. Yep. Now, now we just get to zip them up and then kind of stir around the flavors. That's what I do, is that what you I do? I usually do too, just so they're kind of all incorporated. Now here's the thing, when you're making these freezer meals, you want the gallon size bags to be freezer bags. Otherwise, they're too thin and they will break open in your freezer. Oh. So oh. make sure you've got thick, thick freezer bags. All right, trying to get that brown sugar in there. <laughs> yeah, right? And I mean, yeah. you can, I mean, you don't have to do it too much. Right, just, I know, because the Instant Pot, it's all gonna cook together yeah, anyway, so. Yeah, exactly. We're good. So okay. you can see these bags are pretty chuck full. <laughs> if you have just a little bit of freezer space, that's the great thing about these, is they're not gonna take up a ton. No. I would recommend laying them flat and stacking them up. However, if you've got the room, freeze them kind of standing up because it's gonna be so much easier to pop that in when um, it's frozen in that shape, pop it into your Instant Instead pot. of like a square mm -hmm. that you're trying to shove in, which exactly. I do, do sometimes. <laughs> I know, and that works too. And you can thaw it in the microwave a little bit and you're gonna be fine. Perfect, but yeah. Okay. Okay, we're there done we with go. these three. We're gonna move on to the next recipe. So the next recipe is our easy turkey tacos or beef tacos. Yeah, whatever you've got. We did turkey because it was on sale and yep, it was on sale and mm. I love turkey. We love so. turkey, ground turkey. Exactly. Mm. So we cooked and drained the grease from our ground turkey so it's all ready to go. So you can just throw that right okay. in there. Next, we already used one of these so it's the chili ready diced tomatoes. It has some chilies in it and it smells Amazing, so we're gonna dump that in there too. I like the seasonings that are used in those. Yes. And then we already used a taco seasoning, half of it, so we're just going to throw in the other half. Do you know what I love is the Kroger taco seasoning. It is so inexpensive, but it has the yes. best flavor. Okay. Out of all the taco seasoning packets that I have used. Yes, so yeah. I was comparing prices. This was only 38 cents yes. compared to a dollar of the name brand. Great. And it's the same ingredients you're just yeah. paying for. And this one has good flavor. Exactly. So, there you so, go. I've used that one for years. Go Kroger. <laughs> okay, and that's all you have to do. Now, if you're gonna cook this in the Instant Pot, you wanna add about a third a cup of water before you cook it. Um, I wouldn't suggest putting it in right now, but right before you cook it, add your water. Then if you're gonna add, put it in the slow cooker, you can cook it for three to four hours on low, or if you're just desperate and hungry, stick it on your stove top, yeah. heat it up. You could also Super simple. even do this one in the microwave. Defrost totally. it, because the meat's already cooked. Yes. So you just need to defrost it and then warm it up. Yep. And you'll be good to go. This is good for like Everything. quick lunches, 
serve it over nachos, put it on a salad, you can put it on a tortilla and roll it up in a burrito. Like, it's so versatile. Exactly. So part of our 25 ingredients, you have tortillas and cheese and a little bit of extra salsa yep. to go with it. So super simple, easy, and you're good for dinner. All right, done with this one, let's move on to the next. Our next recipe is three ingredient chili. Yeah. So it's so simple, such a good one with fall coming. Right, I love it. So we're gonna throw this together. This, I love even the simple recipes like this because I prep it all and then my kids can take care of it. Right, or you just don't have to think about what's yeah. for dinner, you just pull it out like, okay, it's we're ready. Done. Exactly. Yeah, so here we go. So the first ingredient is ground turkey or you can use ground beef, yep. whatever you wanna use, but. We use ground turkey. Turkey was on sale this it week. It was, that's why we did it. <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna add a can of diced tomatoes, but you wanna make sure that it does have like some green chilies or something in it. You'll notice this one is called Chili Ready. Like literally made for chili. Exactly. So, we'll add those in. It's got some really good seasonings in it. It smells like chili too. I agree. All right, next one. Last one is just chili beans, and we want to keep the liquid in there that's going to because it's add it's to this. Chili. Yeah, it's, it's a soup. soup. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we do need some liquid in there. Exactly. And then that's it. All right. So we wouldn't suggest cooking this in the instant pot just because there's not a ton of liquid and you don't want a, a really liquidy chili. So I yeah. suggest slow cooker for like three to four hours on low or even on your stove top and just until it's heated through. So yeah. super simple. And then one of our other ingredients is cheese. So you can throw a little cheese on top. So super simple, easy meal. All in your freezer. Done. All right, the next recipe that we're making are country style ribs. And these are boneless ribs. You can get them just over in your butcher area. Um, they usually say country style I was right say, on them. That's how I know. Yeah. Oh, okay, these are country so style. So they're boneless, they're um, not very fatty, and no. that's why I like them. They're also usually really inexpensive. So if this is a cut of meat you haven't used before, Highly recommend it. And this recipe is so easy. So our mom used to make this recipe for Sunday dinners. I mm -hmm. swear like once a month, it was like the go-to Sunday dinner. And yes. all of us just love it. So you guys gotta try These it. These just fall apart after they cook. Um, yes. If you can't find them at your grocery store, I've also made this with pork chops. Oh, that's And it's idea. worked just as well. So. All right, while she's adding meat, I'm gonna add one onion that we've already chopped and gotten ready. So we'll just dump it right in. I'll switch, yeah. Okay. Put in our onions. It does make it go by a lot faster if there's two people yes. prepping the Instant Pot. This is a fun thing to do with girlfriends right. or even get your kids involved and say, okay, your job is to add the onion, your job's to pour in the sauce. That's a great idea. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna add a whole container of barbecue sauce. We're just gonna dump the whole thing in. And you can use your favorite kind, whatever. Yes. Again, whatever I went for got. whatever was like the least expensive, but actually Kroger or Smith's or whatever your Kroger is by you, they make really good sauces. Yeah, they have really so good sauce. I was, I was impressed with the flavor. Yep, there's also, you can usually find really good sales. Our favorite is Sweet Baby Ray's. Yes, that's, that's one of my usually favorites. my go-to. Stubbs makes a really good one. Yes. All right, while you're finishing that up, we're gonna stick about a half cup of brown sugar in each one. If you want to cut back on sugar, I feel like this is one, this is one you, you could, could do. Yeah. A quarter cup and of brown sugar. Still mm -hmm. delicious. Okay, so here is the secret ingredient to this. So this is called liquid smoke. You can find it by um, the barbecue sauces. Yep, yep. It's usually only like a dollar or two, but it's a game changer it in is. this recipe. It just adds this deep smoky taste, which yes. you usually don't get in an instant exactly. pot. Exactly. From a smoker. So I'm thinking we've got two tablespoons. Two tablespoons of that. Mm -hmm. Of this in each one. This is strong, so if you don't want it too smoky, you could cut it in half, but. Exactly. And you can find liquid smoke at every grocery store, like yep. Walmart, Kroger. I've seen it everywhere, it's on Amazon. Yep. Exactly. Yep, so if you're gonna make this recipe, invest in some liquid smoke. Yes. Okay. All right, I think that's it. Do we get it. the rest of the barbecue sauce? We're yep. all good? Okay. Good to go, close it up. Exactly. Oop. 
Now this one will feed, I feel like it feeds closer to four people. Um, yeah, so just, just depends if you on have, ribs. Yeah, if you have more people in your family, just make sure you have a few more sides and you'll be good. Here we go. Yep, or if you want to throw in some extra ribs, you can do that too. Yeah, sometimes we get complaints that, oh, you used all canned ingredients, it's not all healthy. Mm -hmm. Like this is just the main dish. So with your side dishes, you yeah. can make those all super healthy too. Yep, so. we always serve dinner with a oh, vegetable sorry. and a fruit. So Let's do. just Let's do. make your sides be healthy and you're good. Yep, you're good to go. You could also do a homemade barbecue sauce if you are that domestic. Yep, some people are. Which some people are. And awesome. there's simple recipes out there. So look those exactly. up. Okay, okay, next one done. This recipe is called Kahlua pork. Now we had this a lot growing up. It's one of my favorites. And it's yeah. so easy because it's just literally like two ingredients. Two ingredients. Well, three mm. ingredients. Mm-hmm. All right, should we get started? Yeah. Okay, so first of all, just know it's a pork roast. And so in the Instant Pot, it's gonna cook for about 70 minutes or so. It's kind of a smaller one, so 70 minutes is fine. And then if you're in the slow cooker, I like to cook my pork roast for like 10 hours, like eight yes. to 10 on, on low. Low and slow. Exactly. Yep. So put it on our bag. And now we'll put all the directions for all of these recipes yep. for you down below in the description. Okay, got our bag ready to go. You ready? Yep. So okay. these two ingredients are just salt and liquid smoke. Yep. So liquid smoke you find on the barbecue aisle at the grocery store, like where all the barbecue sauce is. Now here's where you have to get down and dirty to do this. Well, you don't have to. You could sprinkle it on, but I found that the flavor is even better if you can kind of rub the salt in, like massage it into the pork. The pork. It's going to give it just a little bit more flavor, mm. kind of give it that crusty outside. I like it. So do about half on one side and then we'll flip it over and rub the other half. Now here's the thing, if you're short on time, don't worry about this step. But you can just dump it in. You can just dump it That's in. That's usually what I do is just dump yep. in, and it's but good. But if you love flavor like I do. Go ahead and rub it in. And then we're just gonna pour the liquid smoke on top. I just kept the pork in its tray so it could kind of catch the drippings. And you can just throw it all away when you're done. Yeah, I'm exactly. A fan. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna flip it over and do the other half. So with this, I found that it's best to use like a little bit fattier cut of pork. Nice. So keep these fat marblings in. Don't feel like you need to trim them because that's what's going to add tenderness and moistness to this. So. Juiciness. Yes. All right. Okay, I'm gonna put Throw it right in it there. In. Perfect, now if you're cooking this in the slow cooker, you just put it right in. Yep, as is. There'll yep. be enough moisture, you'll be fine. It'll be fine, but if you're doing the Instant Pot, you need to add about a half a cup of water to it before you cook it. We're gonna close this up and stick it in the freezer. This is, yeah, ready to go. Ready to go. Awesome. So now that the Kahlua is done, you can easily shred it. It should just fall apart. Use, you can use two forks or like we have, we're using these bear claw shredders that are super nice when you're shredding meat. So you can serve this as part of our 25 ingredients. We have flour tortillas, but we love to serve this over rice. It's delicious just over a bread of rice, put your favorite vegetables on top. You can also do it in a wrap. You can do it on a salad, or here's my favorite. Save a little bit if you have any leftovers. Put it on top of homemade pizza. Kahlua oh, pork pizza. pizza. It is so good. And put some peppers on there, some banana peppers. I love it's that. It's delicious. So there's my Kahlua pork secret. Done with this one, let's move on to the next one. All right, the next recipe is sweet pork. Now this one is so easy. We actually call it easy sweet pork easy on sweet the pork. website. Yeah. yeah. So what we did is we took like a three to five pound pork roast yep. um, and just put it already in the bag. This is one of my favorite recipes to use pork in. Pork yes. is so inexpensive. It's pretty lean. These are a pretty lean cut. You can use kind of whatever pork roast that you have. A shoulder will work great, a butt roast. Yeah, yeah. Just a pork loin. Even, yeah, I was gonna say even a loin works yeah. just fine. Doing stuff, let's uh, maybe brown sugar first. Okay. So we got a cup of brown sugar that's going in. These are, like the name says, so sweet. So sweet. So sweet, that's so good. Mm -hmm. And then a bottle of your favorite taco sauce. Right, and there's different sizes of taco sauce. I mean, it really doesn't matter that much mm -mm. just because it's, it's more of like a sauce that it's gonna sit in. So I saw yep. some, these are 12 ounces, you can do 15 ounces. Whatever your favorite taco sauce Mostly is. Mostly just needs it for the flavor. Exactly. There's gonna be plenty of liquid for this one. Yes. All right, and then our last ingredient is Coca-Cola. Now, 
I messed up. I'll just admit to you right now. <laughs> I did not mean to buy diet Coca-Cola. It will still work just fine. Yeah. But usually if you just use just plain Coca-Cola, it has a little bit different flavor. But yeah. not an artificial taste. Yeah. So it's really a preference. Either way, I know it is preference. Mm -hmm. Either way, it still tastes amazing. So yep, still works. I'm gonna pour while you hold the bag open. Kay. Is that okay? Yep. So do about two cups of this. The good thing it's it's forgiving. Like we're just gonna estimate here about two cups and it will definitely have enough liquid in it. Yeah. That's for sure. For sure. All right, you wanna zip that yep, up? Yep, I can zip that up. Awesome. And get the air out. So yes. this recipe comes from a Utah restaurant. Yes. Called Cafe Rio. There's also a Costa Vida, but they kind of made sweet pork famous. Um, it's just a really sweet, sweet, sweet meat, uh -huh. which it sounds so interesting, especially if you haven't tried it, but it's really it's good. So good. Like sweet pork burritos are my kids favorite food. I think every time we go to Cafe Rio, uh -huh. this is what I order because it's yep. my favorite. And Steph loves sweet pork that quesadillas. Open. That's what she always gets. Oh, nice. I like the sweet pork salads. Oh, yeah. Those are divine. Um, I've also, when I haven't had Coke on hand, but I've had like Dr. Pepper. Yeah. I've done it and it works it great too. It works so good. Just mostly needs the sugar. So. <laughs> Anything to make it sweet, right? Yep. Nice. Yep. I noticed you got caffeine free. Yeah, didn't mean to do that either. Sometimes you need the caffeine. <laughs> All right, so cooking time. So this goes in the Instant Pot for 90 minutes. Now, I know that seems like a lot, and sometimes people say you can cook a pork for about 45, but lots of times it's not cooked all the way through, all the way through. or it's really rough. Like, if you have rough meat, you're not cooking it long enough. So I always say, like an hour to 90 minutes. Sometimes I'll even just cook it and let it stay on warm all day. And oh, really? it will it will taste amazing. Yep. And then slow cooker. Slow cooker all day long, like eight to 10 hours. I love this in the slow cooker. On low. On yeah, low. on low, it needs to be on low. I yeah. actually wouldn't even recommend doing it on high because mm -mm. you want it to be that soft, tender, shred Juicy, apart. Easy, not yeah. dry. Yeah, perfect. So. All right. Okay. Done with this Done one. Done with this one. Moving on to the next. So this is a spiral ham. It's already been pre-cooked, so you really don't have to do much to it other than add a lot of flavor and heat it up. So that's what your Instant Pot is for. So we're gonna make a yummy sauce to go on top of it and then we'll cook it. So let's get started. So I have a half a cup of brown sugar that we're just gonna dump in here. Then we have a half a cup of honey. I'm kinda just gonna eyeball it um, because really you can never have too much honey. Am I right? I am right. Then we have two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. We'll just pour on top. Again, I'm just gonna kinda eyeball my two tablespoons. And then you want, you can't forget your spices. So you have a fourth teaspoon of nutmeg and a half teaspoon of cinnamon. So I'm just gonna put those in here too. Then I'm just gonna take my basting brush and just kind of mix it all together. All right, once it's nice and all mixed together, now it's time to put everything into the Instant Pot. So, I'm gonna scooch that forward. It's just over for you. So, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna put a trivet onto the bottom of the Instant Pot. Now, you don't want a high trivet. You want one that's pretty low. So, trivet on the bottom. If you don't have a trivet, I've done it before without a trivet, it works just fine. Next, we're gonna add a cup and a half of water. So, we'll just pour that into the bottom of the pot because it has to pressurize, right? Then I'm gonna show you a little bit how I'm gonna do it to the ham, but then I'm gonna transfer it over so it's not a big brown sugar mess right here. So we're gonna take some of our sauce and I like to keep put it in between each piece and just kind of spread it around a little bit. If you need it more liquidy, you can do that too and just add a little bit more water, but I like it nice and thick because it will get more liquidy as it goes on. So just depending on how you like it. Some people just like to take this and just pour it all over so the, the edges are nice and flavored. I love my inside flavored. So transfer it over. It's gonna be kind of a tight fit. If it doesn't fit all the way for you, you can always trim some edges off and let it fit, but it fits just fine for me. So we're going to just continue basting this little guy, basting the outside, basting the inside just to give it some yummy flavor. I love that Dijon mustard flavor too, and it, it's, mm, I can smell it. Once everything's in, you're ready to go. So it's okay if your ham goes over a little bit on the line, you have a little bit of room on your lid, so it's okay if it goes over just a little bit. As long as your whole entire thing is not over, and as long as your lid can go on, you're fine. 
Okay, so we're gonna put the lid on. There we go. Now, usually I'll have you turn the knob to sealing, not venting. And, but this one is a different one, so I don't have to push, I don't have to turn any knobs, it will automatically do it for me. We're gonna push the pressure cook button. Now, all you have to really do is get it warm. So we're gonna go all the way down to four minutes. You heard that right, just, just four minutes is how long you cook your ham. The good thing is you can cook it and then you can just leave it in your Instant Pot until you're all done. All right, so we are good. This is a little bit of a different pot, so I need to push start but most of the time you can just set the timer and walk away. Okay, so we are all done here. We're just going to wait for it to cook and then, yep, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so once the timer is done, you had your four minutes of cooking, you can go ahead and release the pressure. Once all the pressure's out, carefully open your lid. There we go. And you guys, your ham is done. It is all done and it smells so good. Now I love this because you can make a delicious gravy with the drippings that are in there and you also get just really good ham. So instead of pulling it all out because it's still burning hot, I'm just gonna cut you a few pieces just so you can see how good it is. Ooh, there we go, oh my gosh. Okay, we colored up the edges too with the sauce that we put on. It's, it is delicious, absolutely delicious. All right guys, if you want more freezer mills, I have six that you can make in just an hour, right up there. All right guys, I'll see you later, bye.